John here guys and today we're talking about the new Jumper T18 Pro and this is the one with the RCDC R2D2 Alps gimbals on board and I'm going to try to answer for you is this $200 radio worth it's a very large price tag compared to its brothers now if you're confused about all the different jumper models. This is the T16 Pro, the, uh, <laughs> the old top of the line flagship. This is essentially last year's model, uh, like Optimus would say, ready for the scrap heap. You're old, Megatron. Yesterday's model, ready for the scrap heap. Not quite, though. This is still an immensely fantastic radio. And if you have one, I would say there's basically zero reason to upgrade to this unless you just like the carbon fiber front let's put it there but we're going to address four things one the looks two the gimbals three the new multi-protocol module that adds some functionality and four all around value for this thing it does come with a few extras like this really excellent hard shell case the main differentiator is going to be the gimbals these rcdc alps 90 gimbals this is a different type of technology a different type of sensor than a hall sensor now can you feel the difference i don't know if i feel the difference it feels a little bit looser to me but that's probably just the spring tension on this particular radio um, when i'm flying though i feel like i can feel the difference now, i'm very new switching to 4.2 and so it's tough because I don't know whether the smoothness that I'm feeling is related to that or related to this radio, but I felt like compared to using my jumpers, I could track very, very smoothly, very, very easily. And I tried to be able to show that. I went to Betaflight to the receiver tab. I hooked up this radio, the jumper to the same quad and i just looked at the sticks and i moved the throttle to different positions to see if that uh, attenuation point would would uh, fluctuate or not and they really kind of behaved the same so you can't really tell I, I moved the sampling rate all the way to 10 milliseconds it didn't really seem to make a difference but i feel like i can feel it just for good measure i tried a quad that was not on 4.2 and it did feel smooth and i remember it feeling but it's not a gigantic difference. And I feel like this is a very subtle difference that not everybody's going to be able to feel. Some people are saying that they can't feel it. So I'm going to be like, you may or may not feel anything. I don't think it's worth 70 bucks more just for that. But are any of the other features worth it? This carbon fiber shell is awesome. It looks great. Um, I'm the kind of person that many, many years ago in my Honda days, I paid $500 for our carbon fiber hood for my Civic SI just so it could look cooler. That's just aesthetics. I don't really care about aesthetics on my FPV gear as much, mostly because I'm never actually looking at it when I'm flying, you know, because your goggles are on. So uh, this, I really did want the carbon fiber front. I had it on my QX7S. I paid extra for that radio. This is the most expensive radio I've ever bought at 200 bucks. But golly, just for the gimbals on this, is it worth it? Well, there's other features. What about the new 5-in-1 multi-protocol module? Well, for some, that may be a worthwhile feature. I know when that was announced, everybody went crazy. They were like, oh my gosh, 900 megahertz. What can we do? Can we do Crossfire? Can we do R9? No, you cannot do Crossfire. You're still going to need one of these. You're going to need a Crossfire module. This is the micro one, or you can use the full-size one. But when you add this, which is the cheapest version, which is $70 onto this, now you're up to $270. And that is a very expensive radio option for anybody to be able to stomach. When, especially when the Tango 2 is only $160. Man, of course you can't really get one of those right now, but maybe in two weeks. I have changed out to these Team Black Sheep Honey stick ends, those are the best stick ends in the game. In my opinion, they really help by adding a little bit of extra weight. If you're a thumber, there is a no-brainer in changing out. The ones that it ships with are pretty much these right here, same ones as on the Jumper T16 Pro, which I have right here. 
Uh, and then you have sort of the longer ones on this Radio Master T16S. So let's just do a quick roundup of any differences in these. Um, I'll go ahead and put the antenna back on top for just a second. I took it out because I really just don't need it for anything. That is one of the significant differences between these three models. You see the antennas here on this Jumper T16 Pro and here on this Radio Master TXC S, this one's a little bit longer, but these are both for your standard 2.4 uh, modules in there. Um, whereas this one is not. This antenna, as you can see right here, is 915 megahertz only. So the five in one module that's inside here is only connected to this. The one that is for your other 2.4 gigahertz, for all the other modules in this multi protocol, for all the other protocols, FR Sky, Fly Sky, you know, toy grade stuff. It's on a linear PCB style antenna that is sort of like glued to the top of this thing. So you can't adjust the angle at all like you can on those other radios. So I don't really like that, especially since this is going to be useless. I'm probably just going to take this off, leave it in the box and never, ever actually use this. Now, if you're an R9 user, it may be beneficial to you, but I'm seeing some people report that they're having fail saves trying to use this with R9. And so they're still using their module just like the Crossfire guys are. So that's a little disappointing. It was kind of one of those features that sounded really cool, but in practice, not really that good. Now the battery bay is sort of enlarged, but it's still not as big as the TX16S. So I don't think you're going to be able to run the 20, whatever, 100 cut style cells. Maybe you can, it's a little bit taller. Um, so that may not be a thing. One thing I really, 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 really dislike uh, are that the fact that this scroll wheel is terrible. It's horrible. It's worse than the original jumper. You try to push it once. It moves like three times on the screen. Uh, it took me a while to be able to bind up to an FR Sky quad because I kept going from, there's three different options of FR Sky. I kept going from the first one to the third one. And the second one was the one I really needed, but I couldn't even see it because it just kept jumping so fast and I thought it didn't even have it. Eventually, after you know trying to bind to the other two and it not working, I found that it wasn't there, it just kept jumping. That's terrible, that's annoying, that's frustrating. Especially since the scroll wheel on this $130 radio is a dream it is beautiful oh my gosh this scroll wheel is so precise so i mean you're not going to be really using it that much once you set up your models but still like this is way better the buttons on this is better the i don't like some people may like it but i don't like that you still have to long press to turn it Welcome off to the light is cool i don't like all these little flashing lights on the front they don't flash but they're very bright it's distracting if i was flying this at night it'd be a little bit distracting i don't like it which is the way to turn it off i don't know if there is we're gonna have to find out um so that is a bonus now another big gripe about this thing is the fact that this USB-C thing, when I got it home, I was like, oh yes, I'm gonna charge my 18650s with this thing. I plugged it in, I left it for a few hours, I came back, they were still at two bars. What the heck, what the heck, what the heck? Well, I looked it up, this does not have USB-C charging, like this $130 one does. Like the newest um, versions of the T16 before they retired that model did. So we all really liked the fact that Jumper was constantly adding new additions to their radios. They added the USB-C charging, they added the gimbals, they added the internal motor fleet protocol module. And we really liked the fact that every time they would add it, they would make it available for a very inexpensive price to purchase, to be able to add to yours if you bought before those upgrades were on there. So you could always take an initial launch Jumper and upgrade it all the way up to a current one. So given that they've already given those, why? I like, are they purposely trying to do this with the T18? Are they purposely trying to give us less options and then increment them out and make us buy them? Like that's, I mean, good Lord. Now that may not mean much to you. Supposedly it's not the safest to charge, you know, these models with the batteries in there. And some people are like, I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm gonna take them out just in case something wrong 
happens. I'm not going to burn up my radio. And that's legit. But it's very frustrating. Like, I'd at least like to have the option to do that. The buttons don't fast turn on, but they do fast turn off. Check this out. Boom. It's off. Super fast. I do like that. So is it worth it? These are essentially the two models on the market that you're going to be comparing. Um, the T16S or the T18 Pro or the T18 regular. There's another cheaper one. Either way, this is still cheaper. $130. I think the jumper models are $160 or $200 for this one. Which one should you get? Uh, well, I'm going to tell you which one I'm going to be keeping out of all three of these, and it's going to be the T18 Pro, but probably not for the reasons that you are going to care about. I am used to the Jumper T16. I'm used to the gimbal throw. I'm used to the stick throw. I'm used to how it feels in my hand. And this one, although it feels great, it has the great grips in the back. It has the USB charging. It has the great scroll wheel. Everything about this radio is pretty much perfect. The looks are subjective on which one you like better. But the sticks are, Jesus, they're this long. It feels like if you were shifting in an 18-wheeler and this is like a regular car. Shark, that's what you are. Shark, silence! Um, if you're a pincher, I could see how this would be amazing. But I'm a thumber, and so having my thumbs like way up high is just, it's something I can get used to, um, but I don't really want to have to relearn. And so I was looking for the same throw, but maybe an improved gimbal, and that's what this is, and the improved looks. But it really is bothering me knowing I have $270 into this radio. Part of me is kind of wanting to buy that $40 beta FPV thingy and use that for D16 and D8, and then just get a Tango 2 if I can ever find one in stock, because I am flying more and more and more and more Crossfire, basically only using FR Sky for whoops and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know. For a lot of people, though, the TX16S is going to be a better option because of its cheapness, because you can actually get this in combination with a Crossfire module for, I think, 180 bucks with the Master Fire combo or whatever it's called. So what are you going to do, guys? I'm going with the expensive one for now. Maybe I'll downgrade and save a little money later. This is still going to be a great option for some, but if you want the best gimbals on the planet, you know, whether you can feel the difference or not, this is definitely the option for the people that just got to have the best no matter what. T18 Pro for sure. I don't think even bother with the mid range T18. If you're going to, you know, save some money, save all the money, go all the way down and spend 130 bucks. You still get the hall sensor gimbals. They really are good. You could get a shorter stick end. And, and I think I have seen a 3D printed thing that you can use to lower this stick so it is a little bit closer. So if you have one and the stick is a little bit long for you, don't despair. There's still that option. Thanks, guys.